Lloyd Bruni on the mic. MC Bruni. <laughs> Spit a rhyme if you want. I would love to hear Lloyd rhyme in French. Why? Terrible. Can you rap? No. Can you do a French rap? I can, can sing a current song. Oh, some can you sing a current song, song to start it? No, no. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what, this is Reading. What, what is what a start? <laughs> it's what the people want, like. No, I don't. I don't feel the like last it. start. Actually, he cut it out. But to start the, we did a podcast last week with downtime, and to start the podcast, Kevin started singing Queen, really? and then he cut it out. Because so bad, remember in the cast? I know, but it was funny. I can cut it out though. But if you want to sing, just for the, just for, just for me, I'll just save them. I hope it's my ringtone or something. <laughs> No, no, no. You're just trying to think of the lyrics now. I'm trying now. to think of a song, but I'm like, no. What about the one we listened to last night, Demons? I don't know the... I went... Was... <laughs> 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 You're so close. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anyway, so we're here. We're in the specialized truck, like Bruni, Thin Isles. How are we going to solve the world problems? We've started... Well, you guys have kind of had the big push now. We're trying to get behind this Riders Association. We we start off because obviously, Loic, you put in massive... We've got a writer's feedback for all the tracks, and you put in a big message saying how we need to kind of come together and be more of a voice. And I feel like it's been like long overdue that someone said that. I actually thought about saying something similar to that, but I didn't think like you know in, in that chat you kind of say stuff that doesn't really get any traction. So I was True. like, ah, oh, whatever. And then you did it, and I was like, yes, this is this is what we need. This is perfect. And it seems to be kind of like picking up steam now. Yeah, it's just like the last few years, I think everything has been picking it towards something like that. And we, we talked about it with Nico, who wanted to be a writer's rep for UCI, you know, and didn't get elected, even though I felt like he was a really good option. And yeah, that group is a bit messy. Like, I don't know, everything started to, with Finn also, we talked a lot about it, started to go towards the real need to have something solid and organized and pro especially now that we're going to switch promoter so i think i think we are onto something important and it's yeah it's now or never pretty much yeah did you think as well because obviously you just had your injury with your collarbone did that kind of give you free time to be like all right let's put more effort into the yes and no because i feel like we I first talked about it in lords yeah or like yeah. before that even but yeah. in lords was when we were both like we you wrote a big thing and then i wrote a big thing and then we're like who's going to do it and not, neither of us did it and then finally it because happened. we don't want to spend so much time doing it like you say it's, yeah. it takes a takes focus effort. away it takes time and stuff so I didn't have way more time I still had a little bit than usual but a little bit more than usual but I just felt like it was coming like it was urgent because everything is going fast like the ESO like the new promoter they are changing stuff already on the planning like we have less than a year to make some changes I think and um, and like you said like we had some ideas some stuff already since COVID times you know but it was never the right moment and we always wanted to stay focused and stuff so it was and that's why now I still I want to be part of it I want to help like keeping the uh, the dynamic of it like meeting again tonight and things like this but I don't, don't be, want to be take over I don't want to be the one like organizing everything and f- giving the feedback and negotiating or whatever I want to be the one like all of us, like helping it happen, making it uh, consistent and stuff. But I don't. I want someone else to do it yeah. because it's so much work. That's what I kind of felt the same way. It's like you want to help and push it, but then it's like at some point it becomes a job. Yeah, and like you're already doing your other job. <laughs> yeah, I th- I think it takes everyone's involvement. It just kind of needed a push. Like we need all the riders, or you know, most of the riders to be involved so that we can all have like one like. We can all vote on everything, so it's not one person. But you you have to have somebody outside the sport to be like the real head, or not outside the sport, but somebody that's outside not racing the competition as yeah. like the head and like the voice and the person that negotiates for us. But then I think it just needed the little push down the hill, and everybody picked up immediately. Like, yeah, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, and they jumped on board. Now Cause we'll have our second meeting today. So, because do you think it's like we obviously have riders reps, but do you think it's kind of hard to have a riders rep represent someone when they're racing? Absolutely, because that's just like. And it's completely understandable because obviously Greg and Pom Pom are the riders reps. But if you're racing and mm-hmm. then you've got to go to meetings with team managers and stuff, it's like you're going to kind of favor one one side. Definitely. And I feel like even for them to get the information that they have from the group or like from the riders or the meeting with the UCI or with the team managers or whatever, it's pretty hard to get that information to everybody. And it's like, 
I mean, I made the group chat and made a huge like contact list and it took, I mean, it only took me half an hour, but half an hour if during a race week or after a huge meeting, you're not going to be very motivated. So it's yeah. like getting everyone together, getting the information and then sharing that. It's like for those people that have to race and like people like Greg and Pompon who are at the very top of the sport, they're going to be like, this yeah, is stupid. Yeah, Why do I, I have to do this? this? You know, I'm going to go, yeah, recover or do something else. Do, do you think anything else? That's why like Nico has been a good choice because he's like, not that he's like at the end of his career, but I feel like his focus has changed from winning races to more like developing that bike and like, it's not so much focused on winning where I feel like Greg's definitely still in like, and Pom Pom as well is like, they're right at the pointy end still. So it's like, their time can't be spread as much. I think so. But yeah, Nico is at the point where he's not trying to win anymore. I think it's obvious that he's still super fast and everything, but he's not like Greg and yeah. he's not like Pompon. And I feel like we cannot blame Pompon and Greg so much because the few things we had to do, we can feel the weight of it. You know, it's yeah. kind of annoying to do it sometimes. And so I cannot say, no, hey, I great, do yeah. more, whatever. Like, yeah. it's a tough job. But at the same time, that's also, like, the thing we want to propose. It's something that will change it for the better for these mm. two people that are already doing m more than what they would like, I think. Yeah, but they can do less and the other person would take the, yeah, the weight of it. Take the and of someone it. like Nico has the wheel. Like, he really wants to help. And, you know, and I feel like, feel like he cares Greg and Pompon, mm. they want to until they actually have to. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And I think it's hard. Like you said, they have meetings. They spend a little bit of time and they need to spend just as much time to retransfer the information to us. So they just, just get the information and it doesn't always come down to us or the, the other people. And when we had that first meeting, Greg was telling us things that he knew also from like a week ago that we still didn't know, you know. So it, it was like, okay, so this is a problem. Like yeah. first example of what's wrong, like you know things that we don't and it's like the, we had like two weeks we still have a, li a little bit of time to change or ask for changes for next year to the, to the UCI but now it's like almost finished and we didn't even know we had the options to propose like new ideas and stuff so yeah it was a you know, and then when, once we know that was an option it's already over Yeah. and then years after years it just doesn't change so much and I feel like when you see a track like here like it's super nice there's a lot of work I can like I cannot say anything bad same They've done a really good job, but there's so many things that could be better. And I came for like to watch the Copa Catalana. I took for like I took only half a day, you know, like it's nothing. But still, I took half a day, walked the track. I was I had one collab and a half, you know. I was just I wanted to help, so I came, did the full feedback, like took a lot of photos, uh, draw some stuff, and I was like, okay, this is what I will do to make it better. And then it didn't change so much, you know, like. Yeah. Barely that, that, anything. That's also a thing. It's like you can put in heaps of effort and then it doesn't actually do anything. Yeah. So then it's like, why am I putting in more effort that I shouldn't have to do to then get nothing back? It feels like you're just like swimming against a river, you know? It's like, yeah. here's all this stuff. And but it's like, yeah. we don't care. Yeah. That's you another know? example. And like that's we why need, we, yeah, we, need we need something. Like I live here so I can just come and say, hey guys, like to the riders, I feel like we have some issues, especially with the last two bridges. For me, it's like, not so nice. Super sketchy. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't what what so do we do? Like, should we vote? Like, we ask for a drastic change or not right? Or, you know, like, and we have a, a voice because the, uh, yeah. what's the name? The the ski results, they're going to spend a lot of time, like, filling up the holes at the top so it looks perfect and stuff. But mm. the actual problem is not there. You know, it's at it's the bottom of the track. Further down. And safety-wise, there's so many stumps. Safety-wise. Like, well, that's one of the things, I guess, it's like if you have one rider or two riders or three riders kind of complaining, nothing happens. But exactly. if you have, like, a large voice that are all like hey we all have voted on this we all agree that this isn't safe yeah we don't want to ride if it's not safe exactly because that's probably the biggest thing for this is safety mm. probably it's, it's safety for sure and i feel like that's something that has been highlighted over the last few years is like some sections of tracks where everybody walks in and is like what the hell is this like mm. you know it's like you need the rider because we're the ones riding it you need the rider's voice to like to judge the track and like you can see even with like brooks injury and mosainan and like other people that have complained about like how long it takes to get them off the mountain and like mm -hmm. sections of courses that are just like causing crashes where it's like yeah, there should be something in place to protect the riders more than there already is and that could basically start from like the the composition of the track the the marshals the medics the safety plan whatever and that's mm -hmm. something if we talk about it as a group and then we have the person in charge or like the person 
representing us yeah. to write something. Yeah. And then it's like brought to the UCI or to the ESO or whatever. And it's like, this is what we want for safety for us, yeah. you know? And so like, that's like kind of the whole idea behind it. Cause you have 20, like 40, 50 voices of riders mm. instead of just three people in a group chat going, Hey man, what the hell is this? And yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's just structure and like actually being able to put stuff you in need, writing. Like a proper like structure formal. Is so compl- important. It's like a formal complaint yeah. almost or yeah. formal like. That's what we need. Like structure to make it official and recognized by the ESO, <laughs> UCI, everybody. So if the vote or whatever is like pretty key to making an event or not, mm. that UCI and ESO actually listen to it and do- just don't say, oh, nah, fuck it fuck the writers yeah you know and i don't think they will like i feel like they have some well, they good have, intentions they have eight years with the sport right so the yeah. relationship has to come off on the right foot because if it doesn't like what and i feel like the managers they already set up a really nice but it took them two years to set up like the w what was it world mm. team Alli- alliance yeah wta or something yeah that. something i don't know no world's gravity alliance i don't know exactly yeah but it took them a long time to get that going so they actually have an organization where all the elite teams i think have a voice and they discuss matters and if they have a problem with a rule or whatever they submit it and it has some importance i think some yeah, influence totally. yeah and if they have something we have something and the eso also like is at the top of the board let's say and we can work with the managers we can work with eso then it's all going to be better and i feel like the sports like it's still a super chill sport you know there's we come from nowhere like yeah. most of us yeah. but we need i think to step it up on every level professionalism and like and just the yeah. general like v- i mean the vibe of the sport doesn't have to change but like certain things do so that it's it's still happy you know because yeah. people complain about everything but as long as it's more professionally done like professionally professional complaining mm-hmm. but more <laughs> professionally done and like done in a manner where it's not like us against them or them against us it's like let's work together to make the sport better is is what's super important because it's pretty easy for us to come across as like we're gonna argue with everything eso does we're gonna do this that and the other thing and it's just not how it is i think it's more about like us and the managers and them like coming to like decisions to be like these are the things that affect us directly we need to work on it together versus right now with the uci it's just like headbutting i'm it's like yeah, we, we don't want to get... change everything. No, we don't. Like, yeah, we don't want to make sure some it's just stuff key stuff to make us yeah. happy. Like you know, some it's stuff like safer. dialed, and then we come. We have no issues, no like, blah blah blah, wasting time talking about a shitty jump or whatever. You know, it's like little things, but the sports not going to change. We just need better recognition. Yeah, and I feel like it's it doesn't have like Brooks injury was massive. You know, it's like life changing injury, mm. and he got lucky and stuff. But it really shone a light on like how unprepared. Yeah, and for example, uh, David Orvath, you remember that guy in yeah. Val d'Isol, German guy who slipped from the bridge at the top and and ended in a water yeah, drain yeah. Yeah. and can't walk anymore. Yeah, like things like that. Like try to, and me like little like little shit like I landed still on the track but on the like a pile of rocks that was on the track and OTB broken carbon it's nothing it's not gonna change my life yeah but it's these little things that if we can prevent that it'll just make the sport safer better to watch better competition because if all the guys are able to do the whole season Mm -hmm. and if we have more venues you know we need to have that in place so we don't end up with one top guy at the end because all of the other guys are just hurt mountain biking is mountain biking so there has to be mountain biking but like unnecessary like you said a pile of rocks on the side of the track and even at the bottom of this one there's like a pile of sticks in the last corner on the right side it's like the track's gonna bed in and get rough and be hard because of how we ride it but the stuff that's so unnecessary just needs to go and that even comes down to like martial competence and like how they brief the marshals and it's like trying to move loose rocks and sticks off the track i tried to move a loose rock at one of the races this year and the marshal yelled at me and told me to like basically just like i yeah it wasn't, it was, wasn't nice about it it wasn't nice and i was like man like this is your job and he's like no it's not i was like yes it is this is a, a literal hazard to everyone's safety and yeah. it's like i'm gonna move it and i picked it up and threw it off the track it was like this big in the rut and i was like yeah it's not someone's it's not helping you i think with the mar- like you said that with the marshal like they need like a better briefing or something because like they actually have more responsibility than i think they take credit for, for sure. especially when you're in a section that's blind and they're holding a stop sign pretty much whether someone's crashed or not. Yeah. And they, like, the amount of times where I've, like, told a marshal, if you've got a red flag, like, get on the track. Like, stop people. They'll be, like, back. But it's, like, it's not their fault, but they just don't know. Well, it, like, It's so hard, though, because they're not paid for anything, you know? They're yeah. just here to help. And but that should be something that we go It's like, I know. If, if, like, like, maybe that's something to change also there and try to have them more 
involved like mm. find a way to make them more involved and yeah. stuff but it's super hard because you need what if there's a double event you need maybe 25 guys on cross country track and 30 guys in downhill I think mm. I think it's on this I think, I think on this race it's like 27 or 28 marshal points mm. so imagine it's like three days of marshalling and you have to pay each person a thousand dollars I feel like just with the event they grand. could do like free lift passes for like a week like they'd be yeah. ways around food vouchers and something shit. like that but just give them more than nothing but yeah, I just feel totally. like the amount of times where I'm like a race could be determined by a marshal not telling someone to stop in like a sketchy section it's just like oh man but it's like you said it's not their fault they just don't know yeah, for but sure. then it's just kind of scary that we're putting our lives at risk for people that don't know yeah. Which is like in a, a professional event, like that's the whole the whole thing. I feel like, I feel like the biggest thing is just like looking after ourselves and looking after the sport for the future. And it's mm-hmm. like, man, you, you can't have that happening on a course like this where you're going sixty kilometers an hour into like a rock garden, basically. And it's like, cool, there's a rock the size of my head right in my line. I'm going fifty kilometers an hour. How am I supposed to dodge this? Yeah, and you just can't have sh- stuff like that yeah, because sketchy stuff. it's like. You know, you, like you said, career-ending injuries, and because mm. I, th- I think our needs as well are like separate. Because obviously, we have team managers that have a voice for the team, but I also think it's a little bit of like Chinese whispers in a way, where like we'll have needs that the team managers might like. Okay, you have a real issue with something, but Leron might not take that as like you say, "Oh, Luke's maybe got a small issue with this thing," and he might not push for that. Yeah. Where if you had a voice and you went to a thing, you're like, "This is <laughs> serious. That we need to change this." It might actually get more of a not like a, a more likelihood for it to actually change, yeah. but I feel like even on my pre- pre- previous teams, this team it's like you say something to a team manager, and that that doesn't mean that'll get heard at a meeting or come back, and it's just kind of like yeah. I feel like a lot of the time we're just kind of pissing in the wind in a way, yeah, or like definitely. We'll but com- the managers they have the same problem as us, I think. Like they've had some issues trying to help. Like this race is hard with paddock situation. Mm. and they've tried apparently for months to change and to find solutions and they no one cared so you know it's still like because nothing's happened you know with this though it's like if there's something that's like so pressing we can go <laughs> we're not doing it you know like what happens if we don't race well that's the thing it's like it's a big deal yeah it's, it's a huge deal and it should never ever have to come to that but it's like we don't get the respect i think we should have as riders because we're the ones that have to risk our lives yeah we're the ones that are the putting like we're the the product well the, yeah, so it's like into, yeah the, the, why do we not get the respect that why aren't we heard and it's i think it's partially because we're not organized but partially because you know there's nothing in place to allow us to be heard so hopefully this can because i don't think they see it as being 50 50 which it's really like if we're not here you don't work if you're not here we don't work we don't so work. it's like it should be a give and a take you know it's yeah. like every other sport in the world like baseball hockey well we're i'm i'm Canadian so it's like baseball hockey basketball are like the most important sports and they all have player unions and they go on strike and they've missed seasons of like huge businesses because they're like we don't think we have the right amount of rights we're not playing this year yeah and it's like one race for us is is a big deal but it's like it, it happens in every sport and like I don't know why we don't get the sort of what the res- not the respect but what they don't yeah almost I wouldn't believe it because even it was funny when you were talking at the meeting about Chris Ball was a bit concerned about us all getting together. I thought that was funny because it's like in any organization or any like company, like you, they want to have like obviously a head of power or someone in charge or someone with 51% that kind of controls it. And it was funny when I thought, when you said that, it made me laugh because it was just like, of course they don't want because they want it run the way they want it run and they don't want riders getting together and making Don't want better. any friction. Yeah, exactly. But it's not really like, it's it should be friction in the direction of like, positive a, a positive yeah and it might at the start be a bit more difficult or have friction but then in the future it would be a positive i mean eight years we got to direct the sport and like in eight years i'll be 30 years old so it's like there's going to be kids that are 12 racing world cups that are going to be 20 and it's like how do we want the direction of the sport to go over the next eight years because it can decide basically the future of the sport like mm. red bulls had their contract for what eight years Something like and that, like yeah. do you see how much the sport's grown and it's like from here to the next level is a, like a big step but if we don't like direct the sport in the right direction and some management comes in and it's just like we're taking over and we're doing it our way it's like you yeah. know the riders should have a say in what goes on because we're the ones like i said that have to risk our lives and we're mm-hmm. the ones that really care about the sport and what we're doing so yeah i can kind of compare it to imagine you went to like a music concert or something and the band 
Meh. did not get looked after. But all the <laughs> organizers and everything, like imagine going to that music concert and being like, the band's like the ones that are not getting looked after here, but like we're there to see them. See the band, it's like yeah. they're, 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 the, they're the show, they're the, the live thing. So yeah. it is tricky. But what do you think like the biggest thing to like help grow the sport would be like outside of just like <laughs> our needs going forward? <laughs> I think it's it's hard to say. Even we, I talked to Chris Ball about it, and he, uh, he asked me the question, and I was like, "There's so much inspiration around with other sports that you can you can pick from, like to have more crowd and then entertain this crowd on site, like you know, kind of things like this, and make the show even more uh, attractive. Mm. So that's also going to talk to going to come to talking about the format, who's going to be in the finals, who's going to be in finals B parallel circuit maybe with other racing p- possibilities pre-racing not pre-racing you know like the the ra- Copa Catalana here before the race is good because it's a new track it needs to be tested but some other places like Fort William they have a race <laughs> two weeks before two everyone like, goes yeah, yeah. And things like little things that <laughs> makes the sport it's cool but it just like you need to structure it better yeah. and then media things also like maybe give more options for freedom on media things i don't know it's it's pretty tricky but i asked the re- i reversed the question to chris and he was like <laughs> you know he didn't didn't know what to say he didn't like he knew he had a lot of audience from Eurosport, like 200 million or whatever who have the subscription so he knows there is a certain audience that's going to like it but so far if we don't change also the venues and we stay in europe pretty much in Oron of america it's not going to reach new people because yeah, it has to go a bit more worldwide. worldwide. Yeah, I've 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 been thinking about this a lot actually because <laughs> I got asked this question a little while ago and I was like, definitely there's gonna have to be at some point like most things two circuits. There's gonna have to be like, like you said, World Cup one, World Cup two, B finals, A finals, like something to like have the development starting from probably a young age. So like the second circuit can start from thirteen, you know, and it's like mm-hmm. IXS Cup, but you know bigger, takes yeah. a step bigger and then it can be they can add british downhill series they can add Aus- austrian series they can add maybe like a couple canadian ones that are part of like the world two circuit and it's like the europeans don't have to go to canada but the canadians and the americans can do it and then the oceana can do that so it's like each place will have like it's not let's just say it's not under one circuit but it's under the same name so that these people can get recognized from a young age and it's like development from there but then it's like at the actual event, maybe having like putting in a little bit of extra money to have another thing there. So it could be like this weekend, there's like a sick DJ, you know, people will come to be like sick bike race. We come in the morning to watch a bike race and there's a DJ in the afternoon. Yeah. And it's like something on the side that maybe makes this a little bit more appealing. Cause it's like, and then maybe adding a different variety to the sport. So it's like there's mountain biking ones and maybe there's like one st- like street race, you know, that doesn't count for the overall, yeah. but it's like, there's a single event that's in a rant, like somewhere random, you know, that like mm. can only hold a street race, but it's like, we all go and we all compete. And it's like, people will get to see mountain biking firsthand. Cause I went to a street race in Mexico and it was like the best event I've ever been to. Yeah. There was like 50,000 people. And everyone after that, like I get messages from people when I was fo- like, from when I was 14 that still loved the, like they're like mountain biking, blah, blah, blah. Cause of this event. And it's like, I think the biggest thing is expanding. So it's not just Europe. You know, there could be four races in North America, two in, Australia, New Zealand, maybe Asia, Latin mm. America, I think is a huge, like growing big, sports big market. market. Like you watch the F ones there, you watch like, you, you know, like UFC, like the people that live there just love sport. Mm. And it's like, even the Brazilian world cup looked insane. And it's like, why don't we go there? Yeah. Why don't we expand our market? Yeah. And, it's there. I like what you said there about like having an event or like having a DJ or having something else like even at Lenzahide they had like the whip off after yeah, the event people stayed for that that's what I mean like, like and I think you want to get the because obviously the hardcore fans are going to travel they're always going to be there but yeah. that's not the that's not who we're trying to like that's not how you grow the sport yeah. you want the casual fan that might be the brother or cousin or someone that's heard about it and if you like if you put a big name DJ or you put like uh, like I think that's why Crankworks does so well is because it's like you don't have to know a like, sport to like say oh that guy's doing a triple backflip that's sick and even if you had like a trick jump at the bottom of the finals and then straight after finals you had like 
best trick or something and then people would come for that and keen for the show yeah i think it's all about the show and like people like whistler crank works because whistler itself is such a spectacle it's like people come up to whistler and they're like oh there's crank crank works is happening yeah. and it's the busiest week of the year in whistler and it's like people that don't give a sh- damn about biking okay. are up there watching and yeah. they're stoked they'll be like this is insane and it's like then there's like a sick dj the night after and then it's like it's like i said like that's why maybe a street race that's not for the overall but part of the circuit like we all go and we do a street race so they used to do one in lisbon yeah apparently it was insane yeah i can't, like you met you got to do like put a twist on it to like maybe people don't like it in the beginning but it's like these are the things that like it's like a street circuit or like outdoor hockey games or like a basketball like all-star game or whatever it's like mm. it just brings people to the show you bring and, eyes on and maybe it's not something we want to do or like to do but it's like it's definitely can bring a lot of people into the sport to be like this is super dope mm. and i feel like mountain biking is super dope so all you got to do is watch it and see it and you'll be like i'm kind of hooked on yeah it. it's just how to get that person to how come do you and bring it in it, yeah. and like how do you bring that person in it's like there's a variety of things you could do i just don't know exactly what the answers are but you know do something you th- do you think as well because i find one thing when i talk to people that don't really follow it but just say you're a casual fan and you come on and it's just straight to downhill finals you hit like who's this why why are they going down then like there's no qualifying build up there's no time training build up i just feel like it's this like straight to finals and people like even my girlfriend was asking me he's like why like they, they, like it does like to a, to a normal fan that doesn't watch it normally they just don't get it so it's hard to get invested in something that you don't really understand and i feel like they don't do a good job of building a story from friday practice to saturday or sunday race i feel like it's just like all this stuff that's kind of hidden and then straight to racing and it's just Think that's, that's why also like sometimes the less riders is, would be honestly I, I hate that's a controversial thing and a lot of people don't like that yeah. but less riders in finals would allow a lot more time to show more to show more of the sport and like maybe they show the top three qualifying runs and it's like these guys qualified first second and third and we're dropping in reverse order because we want the fastest person to go last or whatever and it's like this and like if you have less people you can do the same like say it's only 30 people in the finals and then they highlight the last 15 each person can have like a 30 second or a minute long intro to who they are and then their run happens it's like mm-hmm. this is look bruni he's four times world champion he's from france mm. uh he's just coming off his collarbone blah blah, blah 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 explain a little bit of who he is what this what he does and his whole thing and then pff, he goes yeah and each rider can have one of these it's like an intro card every well, you, race yeah and i think people invest more when they know the person they and if yeah you care so much more if you know mm. who the person is mm. and like know about who they are how do you feel about it as well like i it blows me away that we don't have qualifying filmed and recorded even if it is it, yeah, it, it is, is. But, but like it's not put out on public like, to no. the public that's what i mean I, I know i get it's recorded but it's not showed like i even like you watch motocross f1 anything else and they're qualifying even if it's rob's not commentating it but you can go onto red bull and you just watch each run even if it's cut down it's not quite the finals coverage or anything yeah. but you can go on and watch even for time training if you say okay luke's going up this camera's all right let's just watch his run he does whatever time all right there's another fast guy like be sick and like one guy at the finish line doing interviews like elliot yeah already at the finish line for time training so it's like you have elliot there and it's like finn how's your run it's like yeah it's fantastic thanks uh blah, blah 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 this is what's going on this is like and then it's like every 30 seconds somebody goes imagine you watch that for an hour and a half you'd be like you get to see just so like a, much yeah, riding just like a highlight reel of yeah i think it's better to do highlight than just watch one for hour sure for hit. sure but you know it's like in terms of footage them collecting it it's just like each camera gets so much footage that's what i don't get because i get the whole like live but short track they use the same cameras and everything so short track xc and oh so they've got them so the same so it'd be tricky to go between I have, no I have no idea how it works that's the problem is we, <laughs> we don't know anything but it just seems to me like you're selling a product with this which is content and you've got everyone on the hill with cameras filming Already. the thing that we need to give content i was like don't put it out live put it out an hour later which would probably be better because then you could go back to your truck and you could watch your time training run or your qualifying run so sick. and just be like all right and everyone else can watch it and then it gives you more of a platform to like show how you're like we'll showcase your riding as well i just feel like everyone wins in that scenario but it's true but it takes a lot of effort you know i think it's it's uh, we have I think we we the people uh, at ESO like everybody has good intentions but it takes so much effort yeah and I feel like some of the guys like Bernard you in the past like doing your own videos like YouTube and stuff it also helps to show what's what comes before the finals because there's so much like 
build up people like they just see three minutes but they don't know who crashed and had to work super hard to be back and, w and like you said it's like those three minutes don't really reflect on, on the whole week because it yeah. takes like from now on it's full on until finals you know and it's yeah. so much can happen and so much happens yeah and i think it will be nice but it will be super hard to make it attractive just to watch like intense and it's true like small things because when i watch formula one qualifying i just watched the uh, q3 like w the last thing you know yeah. i don't watch who goes out in q1 like you know it's like little things that you need you can still access everything if you're full-on big fan but i don't think many many people are like that yeah you don't have the time to spend two hours I feel like you day. underestimate that uh, just I don't a little bit <laughs> uh, maybe 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 i underestimate but then if you just do like a 10 minutes or eight minutes recap of the qualifying for sure it's so nice and for example sometimes they do like Elliot's videos they are so nice of the whole They're weekend so good. Yeah. But the one that, that came out last day, night is yeah, sick if you do that on every day instead of just after each weekend it would yeah. be it would be insane it would be really good it but for example not having guys like Rob like it's gonna change a lot of things also I think is, a lot he, of is he going yeah he's still under contract with Red Bull I, I think. don't think he's not, oh, so he's he's not he coming he can't come. Come. I don't know if Elliot's coming either hmm. so the thing is is like a lot of people like I saw a few comments on Pinkbike where it was like Rob should just do his own live stream commentary and I'll mute whoever's talking over the World <laughs> Cup and listen to Rob's. And it was like, people love Rob Warner. Yeah. And he's a staple of this. Like, he's been announcing since Freecaster in like 2006. Yeah. I'd hate to be the guy that takes his job. <laughs> True. Like, like yeah, no matter what, no matter sure. how good you do, people are going to have their, like, it's, they've made their mind up. Rob already. is the best. Yeah. He's, the, he's, he's, it's the voice of the sport at this point. Yeah. And I, I hate, it's like, like, I love Cedric Gracia. Hmm. I love him. But, even when I rewatch the replay and it's Cedric commenting in French, straight up in English, like because Rob is bringing something. Does he do it by himself though? Yeah, there's another guy, but oh, they're okay. in Paris. They're not on site. You know, it's, it's different. Yeah, yeah well, it's hard. Rob, Rob, and Elliot did it from Salzburg when we were in uh, when we were in Linzerheide. They weren't on site. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that either. But you watch if you have, have you guys seen the live show? They do like this whole thing in this like studio, and they did it from remotely. Really? But it's still good, and it's like crazy because. Like, like Rob, like all oh, the first thing I can think of is like, look at the time. Like, it's the same thing. It's like my favorite commentator in basketball. You just like, he's been doing it for thirty years, yeah. and it's the same thing in biking. It's like we lose Rob. It's like you lose the signature touch, the voice, yeah. the feel of the sport, and it's been yeah, since Danny Hart in two thousand eleven, yeah. Sam Hill, yeah. and he's not dead. Legend. Like we can yeah. keep him, you know. He's <laughs> he's not. Yeah, true. <laughs> Halfway there. <laughs> yeah, probably. But I feel like the like. We need, like, we're starting a cool project. We need to work on it, and we need to have, like, a lot of people still helping the thing. Because yesterday, a lot of guys were like, Amori was like, oh, yeah, like, I can't make it. And I, I know he stays, like, 100 meters from the hotel, you know. So mm -hmm. we need people to actually help a minimum yeah. amount. And if everybody, all the good guys are there, then you will feel a little bit better about losing one hour of your week because <laughs> your main competitor is here you know or yeah. whatever yeah everyone's here everyone's yeah, in it together it's everyone's super important together. And, uh, and we need to keep that commitment uh, going it's otherwise for it's, it's, for, it's for everyone yeah. it's for everyone and mm. that's the thing is like that's the point is like it's for all the riders and it has to be it's all, all for one one for all kind of thing you know? yeah and it's I just feel like it's so overdue and we need it it's like today I walked to the finish line I was like well, like all the things that you said the entire time you're like I asked him to do this and this and this and it was like it's the same and it's like okay yeah but you know he's basically the best rider of the last five years you know it's like why would you not take this guy's advice kind of yeah. thing and it's like maybe it's because it's just Loic talking sh maybe he's just talking shit and it's like imagine you could have you report to the somebody that person remote reports to ESO and ESO goes yeah and I think like for example Lenzerheide is some stuff like I love every venue we have sick tracks but Lenzerheide some tracks some jumps sorry are a little bit sketchy I think like for example the wood ones super short at the yeah finish, you over jump you know, like, <laughs> they're a little bit sketchy and then yeah. we should be able to say okay like have a a pool I don't know if you can say that where yeah. you say your ideas for the year after and we say okay to right after so. the race we do it Sunday yeah you know? so like yeah. hey give a feedback to the Lenzerheide crew or whatever next year if this and this is not changed yeah, race. but yeah. then that's at the cost of the venue, 
right? Yeah. But, but the th- venue makes, like, lens are high. If everyone had to buy a ticket, they probably made sick money. Like, For sure. everyone had to pay 20 Swiss francs to go in there. The, like, on the downhill day, they probably had 20,000. On the cross country day, they probably had 30. And it's mm. like, if everyone pays 20 euros, that's a fuck load of money. Mm. And I don't, I don't want to make them lose money and do m- too much, but little things like yeah. that. Yeah, it's like there's two, two hours. The two last bridges here, we should be able to. But I feel like if you're it. holding a World Cup, you've. Taken the commitment to yeah exactly. To, to, it's not like you're like oh we're gonna hold a World Cup. Oh the you do, want this. You're like oh it's too hard. Yeah, you it's, do a World Cup is to go for it. You know? Yeah, you don't yeah, want to exactly. do minimum work required. You know? Yeah, so, okay, exactly. all yeah. in. And I know the guys here they want to do that and they're working hard actually to have families to come watch VIP areas, like you know like to make it a global cool package mm-hmm. for everybody. But with the feedback I gave, I, I was not so stoked today. I was like. Yeah, it could, could be better. Could like, be, yeah. There's some little things I would have done different, told them, didn't change. But overall, we're going to have a good weekend. We're going to have fun. It's going to be sick. But the little scenarios, like worst case Ontario, like. Worst case Ontario? If it happens, it's, it's like worst it's case Canadian. scenario. It's, oh, a, scenario Cana- it's a Canadian saying. Worst. It's like uh, for people who don't live in Ontario or people who do live in, t- on Ontario, in Ontario. I'm sorry. Because it's the worst place. It's, it's not the worst place, <laughs> but worst case Ontario. It's for Trailer Park Boys. My dad's from Ontario and he says it sometimes. Worst case Ontario. <laughs> anyway, Canadian saying. Okay. Like worst case scenarios, some stuff can happen and it's not so nice. But if everything goes as planned, we'll have a good weekend. It's just like in case. Yeah. In case you blow your hand off the end of the bar before the last bridge and oh jump on the road don't you even know, like things like don't this. even say that man. no but <laughs> yeah I get you yeah why not yeah totally you know? and it, the most of the track is sick but it's just like the entire track is sick it's just like one thing needs to it's like two things need to change and it's like two little things and it's like you know it, it takes it's not yeah mm-hmm. and some I think last track Cedric was helping a lot or he did help from what uh, what I've heard and the track was insane. It was mm. So sick. So and I feel like here they didn't ask as many, <laughs> or they didn't use as much input they they have here. Like Mina, Amori, Loris, yeah. Greg, uh, yeah. Cedric, me. Yeah. Like Angel, you know they have so many resources. Hey, are you here today? We want to check it out. Can you come help? Yeah. And I know that maybe not Loris because sometimes he just want to do his thing. But Angel, Mina, they will love to help. Yeah. So Does Angel live here? Yeah. Okay. So they. We just have to help people seeing the value of this new project, yeah. and then I think we'll be we'll be on the good one. I agree. Yeah, it's just like small things, and it's like I think the more you put in, the more you get out. And it's mm. like if we put in work, and then ESO puts in work, and then the venues put in a little bit more work. It's like the product will just get better and better and better because every year everything will just get better, and then eventually it's like you see you see the results of your work. Yeah, and it's it just takes. It's like when you wake up in the morning and it's like, instead of, he's like, I don't have a good example of this. <laughs> you go to the house and you're like, ah, I don't want to make breakfast and you leave. You're going to be cranky in like 15 minutes. You know, it's like take the extra 10 minutes or five minutes, make breakfast, eat it, and you're going to have a way better day. Yeah. You know, it's like the best. It's not a great it's analogy. Like work, but work, it's work like hard now. Rest work later. hard now. Yeah. And exactly. Enjoy it it's later. like you just put in an extra t- day or an extra two days to make changes to the track or mm. whatever, this, that, and the other thing. And it's like you make everything yeah. better and it's, it's about ins- not it's not months it's not works it's you know inspiration yeah. like if venues everybody sees that the writers are involved and they're super happy. working harder and they are actually attached to what the, where the sport goes then maybe the venue is going to put an extra bit of work to make it even better and mm. try to satisfy this writer's force or manager's force or whatever for the paddocks yeah you know so it's like if we inspire ESO and we show that we are involved and they also show us that they really want to help the sport and make more money and allow us to make the sport better, make more money too, probably. Like, what if yeah, everyone wins. Yeah, it's a f- the whole goal is to be a win-win for everybody. Yeah. Right. Venues, everything, you know, and I the sport. I've got two more questions and then I'll let you guys go. What are we saying about junior category? Like, what are we thinking about that? Because like, There's some good y- talks. Because I feel like it should still be here. I feel like it just needs to be a bit separate in a way. For it sure. needs to kind of be its own thing. Like I suggested the mm. race after our qualifying and then you've got a crowd, you've got cameras, you can record it, do a highlight. For sure. 
to be, uh, to be honest, I think junior should be. I think they should just eliminate the junior category and make it U23. Exactly the same as cross country. And if you want to move up, guess what? You can. There's girls racing cross country that are 20. That's mm. the same thing. You know, it's like junior. It's like 17 to to 23, and maybe some people take a little bit longer to develop, and they can. But it's like, I feel like that's but when. Way, when can you start racing? 17. When, when same 17. as junior. Same as junior. But instead of you have to, it's like required to do two years. You could be like by your second year junior. If you're like, I think I can race with the pros. You step up. You like you just up. take your moment. You, but when you, like, cause obviously you had a successful junior career yeah. and I felt like it helped me at the beginning cause getting podiums in juniors and being seen by sponsors and other people, I felt was more beneficial to just say you come in and use 23 and you're 17 and you're getting 20th, yeah, yeah. but that, but you're the fastest 17 year old. Yeah. Cause for example, people you come 17 that. into under 23, if there's a guy who decides to stay until 22 and is fast, yeah. he's going to put 10 seconds on you on your first Yeah, but first that's year. like 250s, man. It's like 250. Yeah. It's but exactly like motocross. I think this is the kind of things the riders and the managers should we can also all talk, talk about together because the managers also have their own interest with recruiting juniors or not. Yeah, exactly. And, you yeah. know, like have I budgets for them or not. But I totally agree with you. It should be the day before. That way yeah. it gives yeah. more time to have – if you want to have a 60-person final, we have a 60-person final, and it gives it way more time to have the right practice for the boys, the right yeah. practice for the girls, and then it's like – the amount of people can go up because there's less time for junior racing, mm. but then the live show can still maintain. It's like, this is the live feed mm. sort of integrity kind of thing mm. where it's like, we're not just throwing people down the hill. It's like, yeah, the top 20 get the special live feed, but there's still 60 people in the finals. Yeah. And I feel so bad for the juniors racing at what? 10, 10 in yeah. the morning. Practicing at seven thirty almost like, yeah, eight. Cause, cause I didn't qualify at lens hard. I went up and filmed the juniors in the off cam a bit and like it's early. And yeah. they're racing then, and I just like like imagine if like Fort William, for example, it's freezing cold. You're up there, it's minus. No, it's not nice for them, and yeah. even though they have a better track because it's not, it's not as rough and yeah. stuff, it's still you need to put them in the same conditions. For sure. Yeah, I like I raced. So I agree. He, with you didn't get to race in the junior category, no, did you? No, you missed. So one, I, yeah. I like I did, and we had the same rules with the with the early morning races. My second mm. year, it was crazy, and it was like. I would wake up at 6.30, I'd do my practice, I'd race, and looks like, oh, I'm here for practice. And I'd be like, I'm yeah. done. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's you're done so early, there's hardly any crowd. Like, no the crowd there, shows yeah. up for the practice, you know? It's like yeah. when they show up. So it's like, why not do it after qualifying? And then people who come for qualifying day will be like, get to see that good racing. Mm. And then they get to stay and they get the, the, the big show the next day. I think it'd be safer as well for juniors, especially like, doing it just a two-day practice qualifying or, yeah, practi- that would be or cool. not even yeah practice qualifying and then practice race yeah. on the next day it's like you've got less time possibly to hurt yourself because as a junior like you're probably not as strong as most of the elite totally. guys and you're going to get more coverage because you're going to be racing with a crowd it just seems like a lot more i agree yeah i totally sure. agree with that yeah i agree with that even though i think it's good to not cut practice because i still get to ride the World Cup track so it's good if they have the normal time on the track yeah. yeah, but also like mixed practice. That's also something oh, to needs talk to about. Go. Needs, needs to go because uh, <laughs> there's no point. It's like you don't have danger. mixed practice. You have mixed sitting it's around. Dangerous. You have mixed sitting around, and then you have a kid that's going really fast with you that's rolling, or vice versa. Yeah, I I see the po- I think the positives was that the girls could ride with their elite teammates and help them do jumps and stuff. I think that was the idea behind. But for it. example, teams could have could like Mondraker does. That's such a good idea. They hired. A rider that's going to be on the side of the track for the boys. Yeah, that's riding with Ele- Eleonora. Yeah, so you can actually show her some stuff, ride with her, yeah. get feedback for the boys, get on the track later for the so boys. Like sad. it's a lot of work, but yeah. it's so it's, smart. Yeah, and then you know, it's, I it's also doable. feel like there should be potentially A B lines where it's like the boys want everything to be bigger, and sometimes the girls don't want that, and it's yeah. like we could have bigger jumps bigger drops bigger features bigger like in bmx you know like that's mm-hmm. the same thing and i i feel like we could have that and it would be super sick yeah there's a lot of things that need to be talked about that just like i don't know how they haven't been talked about in the last eight years ten mm-hmm. years however long it's been yeah and for example girls even boys in Le- leo gang bottom section even the boys like the best boys looked <laughs> okay you know but yeah. like not so impressive yeah but the girls the winning girls they were going zero k per hour you know it's like it doesn't look good for the sport like yeah. make a line that's gonna look make the girl look sick because they are sick yeah. but it's just 
sometimes it's in between and it's too hard for the girls, too easy for the boys or whatever, you know. But yeah. it has to also take into consideration that in all the other sports, it is made different. And yeah. we, we don't want to be like separate girls and, and boys. I think we need the girls. But we I need mean, different tracks. My best example of that was last year in Lenzerheide, going off the final drop. Like the chicane got tightened up and changed because yeah, the girls couldn't scrub girls it. Couldn't scrub it. Yeah, and that's that's it is what it is. You know? Yeah, it's kind of one of those things. And yeah, it's like I get what you we mean. could get bigger jumps, bigger drops, bigger gaps. Fucking make it so sick looking. Mm. Yeah. And well, I think that's one of the things. Like, I feel like we're limited to how big you make something because it's juniors gotta, and the juniors and girls have to hit it. Yeah, too. I don't know if sense. you. I don't know if you suggested or someone else suggested it, but like make it so there is a junior line or women line and then an elite men line. And it's yeah. like you've literally you've got to race that line. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, they yeah, do that. They used to do that choice. at Crankworks. Mm. They used to do that at Crankworks where they'd have, like, the final jump used to be 70 foot long. Yeah. And they wouldn't let the juniors and the women hit it. And then the men would hit it. And it was, like, the f- craziest thing. And then, like, my brother would always complain. But it's, like, that's just how it is. You know, yeah. it's, like, that's the line. And that's what you have to race. It's the same for everybody. Yeah. And I feel like that's what matters. It yeah. has to be fair. Yeah. My last one before I can let you guys go. After you're done racing, whenever that may be, do you see yourself like being involved in this in some way, or you guys just like collect the bag, peace out, drop the mic, see you later, or do you want to like be involved in some way? Because I feel like with this, it's like you care about it so much because you're obviously involved. Do you think you'll keep? I know it's a long way away, but like, would you do? Do you feel you'd kind of like want to stay in in some way? I'm pretty passionate about Mm -hmm. it about the sport about biking it's like my whole life and i feel like i would like to stay involved but more so on the canadian side like grassroots canadian development stuff because i feel like there isn't any of that Mm. but if i could i would you know but it's a lot of travel in the end like eventually i'm gonna be wanting to chill and have kids and vibe where i live (laughs) like (laughs) traveling to world cups just to be like the the guy it would be a lot when i'm like you know when i quit racing because i've already done it i've been doing this since i was 15 and i'm i mean i'm 22 but by the time i'm 35 let's say or greg menard's age like i'm (laughs) not gonna want to do this anymore you know it's like okay you gotta have a family and stuff or i want to yeah so it's like maybe involved more on a on a local canadian level but i I can't imagine myself being traveling that much when i'm older yeah like, you don't have to travel that far. Yeah, you don't have to go yeah, very far. For the moment, maybe it's going to change. Maybe you'll be the new Rob Warner. Oh, no. <laughs> I would yeah, I would commentate. I love it. I, <laughs> I think I would be good I at I think this. Finn's good at this for sure. True. Um, I've commented the, you, not the race. I don't know the thing in Leger. Remember? Oh, yeah. In COVID, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. In French. Oh, the it was, P2V thing? Yeah, it was terrible. I, was, I listened to me. I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't assume it. But no, that's a good question. I feel like we are more into it because we are in the middle of it at the moment i would like to do more for sure when i stop because i feel like there's so much more to be done and for example jorge's job like it's so it's such a sick job and mm. i would love to do that but i don't know all the upside downs of it maybe it's so annoying in here yeah end. but you gotta I deal would, with riders yeah yeah for sure <laughs> gotta we're deal so, with you have to deal with the like bernie of we're the so age. heavy you know we're like ah yeah. this little rock is dangerous this little tree like yeah. for sure it's a lot of work but um I he, would deals like with, he deals with it pretty well, I feel. Yeah, like yeah, he, yeah. he handles it quite well. I would like to do things where I'm wanted. Like if no one, if, if people like, we, like I'm pretty keen to have Elliot, for example, doing this renew, that writer's union thing. If people like reach, uh, reach me and say, hey, we would like you to help for this, for that, for this. I'd be like, yo, for sure. And I'm, I would like to earn enough money at the, like right now so I don't need to care about the money later. Yeah. So even though that, job will not be uh, making millions uh, i would not need that you know yeah. but just do it for the passion yeah, yeah for the f- for the love. beauty of it because yeah. i want to make it better i want to come here and have the riders being like Yee! Yeah. and not be like hey, this is not so nice it's pretty shit you know like it's pretty easy to say right now um and i don't know so maybe i want a family maybe i want to chill maybe i want to say fuck everybody yeah <laughs> you know? i'm pretty I'm pretty bipolar on this. I feel like I have Hard moments moments where I almost don't want... I want to have a team. So some yeah. of the moments I want to build houses and don't talk about yeah. bike anymore. You know, like I, For me, it's like 15 years away almost. Like I'm it's far, a long I'm way, far yeah. away from this. So yeah. I'm... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm but I would love to be involved. You know, it's like this, this sport. It's like, even though it's it just like, it gives me so much. So why not try and create <laughs> something so it gives back to everybody? Because like, 
you try and make, maybe even trying to make it like I feel like most important thing for mountain biking, even for growth now, is like making it more accessible. Bikes mm. are mad expensive. Mm. Finding a place to ride is really hard in most countries. Like trying to prom- like advocate to make the sport more accessible and like advocate to make riding more accessible because it's like a good way to get out and be happy. You know, it's like mm. physical activity makes you happy. It's it's like science. Yeah, and it's like something that you can do to stay away from other things and it's like I, my whole life of bike yeah outside, I've of, skied and outside it's like, of racing it's just a good yeah thing it's to just do. a sick thing to do you don't even have to be a racer it's just like hmm. just creating a better place for the sport do you feel like we get too tunnel vision sometimes about like with racing it's like you, ac- sure. you actually just stop enjoying it because it's like you're so no, but it's not, I've it's, never I've never had okay I've, like I haven't had no, that yet not enjoying sure. it as much but like yeah but it's like when I rode with Cade and Braggy, I didn't ride like that for years almost. Yeah. You know, where you just don't care about I reckon. how the tires feel or whatever, and you just do like random th- dumb stuff. And you I just like, yeah. and I was like, what the fuck? This was cool. I yeah. missed it, you know? Yeah. I and reckon it, everybody on the World Cup circuit needs to come to Whistler <laughs> the first two weeks of October every year. We just do huge party trains down A line at Dirt Merchant and then just go straight to the bar and drink. And like, just two weeks of just like proper party ride yeah. you know like you just need it True. like you need it that's what i do every year you just go ride the bike park with your homies and it's like pissing rain doesn't matter it's yeah. still the best 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 thing in the world i, I feel like because sometimes when i'm at home i'll ride with guys that like aren't that like they're still good riders but yeah. they have so much fun like they love it they, yeah. and i like think about when i'll go riding and you're so focused on going faster and getting the bike set up right that you actually don't like I'll go riding and I'll be like I didn't really enjoy that but yeah I might have found an extra second or something or I was felt faster but yeah sometimes I, I'm wondering if I'm doing it right because I'm the same like when I go to San Romulo it's like one of the sketchiest track for three days full runs yeah. the whole time <laughs> that's what I did in Schladming this You're year like, was like, by the end I was like I'm over it I don't want to yeah. be in Schladming anymore and I was like this should never happen so it, it, you can be get caught into that wrong let's say the wrong mentality but at the same time when you sport. when you get to see the results, mm. then it all makes sense. Like this year, Finn has been grown up so much and he's doing more, well and he's doing consistently like second places or like good good racing. And I feel like it all makes sense. And you want to go back to do annoying things to mm. f- just feel that you know. Yeah, yeah. it's exactly what it's like it's it's exactly that. It's like it's like the long grind kind of thing where it's like, yeah, I had one day where I didn't really love what I was like. I didn't love the trail that I was riding. I didn't love how the bike felt, but mm-hmm. like in the end it's, we're racers and like, yeah. that's the thing. But to be honest in the winter, I only ride by myself. Like I train by myself. Yes, I ride the spin bike in my bedroom by myself. I go wrote like everything I do is by myself. And I think that's why I'd ski a lot. And I like skiing so much is because when I go skiing, I don't give a shit about anything. I mean, obviously, like, safety and stuff, but I just go with my friends, and we just, like, go into the wilderness and go skiing for, like, eight hours, and you're like, that was the best day I've had in a long time, and it's like, you have to have the things where you're able to, like, vent yeah, and then come back because I find that biking, I take a full month off every year. I don't ride my bike in December or January. It's, like, one of the two months. It's, like, I literally just don't bike. Yeah. You have to have, for me, it's, like, each, it's a personal thing for everyone, but... A disconnect from it disconnect from it and like i think that's also why the riding after the season with your friends is important because when it does come to race like practicing and like mm. training and racing it's like you can't do it with people it's like you can't do full trip training runs by with your friends you know it's like mm. you have to i thought it was funny like i the like evolution of like a racer is like you start you normally well, I was the youngest one that was riding with all my buddies that were older and faster me too so I was always chasing them down and then I got faster and faster and then they all kind of got jobs and I made this a job and then I just went from riding with all my friends trying to chase them to like by myself and it was just this weird thing where I'm like I started riding bikes so I could ride with my buddies and now I'm racing bikes by myself and it's that weird like transition phase and I remember I was like riding one day like you said by yourself and you're like Fuck, I just kind of miss riding with my buddies, eh? Hey? Yeah. Like, it's like... But it's funny, we are, like, I have the exact same feeling. Yeah. Like, most of my friends, they don't ride anymore. But no. they have an enduro e- e-bike. Because yeah. it's, oh, they have time once in a week. Yeah. And I miss just going to the bike park with them. And they, but they don't, they have kids. They cannot do it anymore. It's, yeah. It changed, for sure. It's different. But at the end of the day, it's not about just the riding, for me. It's about mm. everything else, you know? Like, mm. feeling that you're doing 
so much pur- there's so much purpose to yeah, it like and it's so team, much purpose it's a mm. team work too because with the mechanic with the manager mm. with the guys on the track like it's everything is so cool to be at the center of this is yeah it feels nice it's and you feel a type of happiness yeah, to be honest. you feel the pressure you feel like the the stake a bit and if, i don't know i feel like i like it but it's not i don't like only writing because writing sometimes like in lindsay Heide, for example i was not writing 100 i didn't write for fun Yeah. I wrote to come back to try to be better for this race and for Leger, whatever. Yeah. But it was not for fun. I didn't yeah. have fun in Lenza. Yeah. But it was just like my job, trying to find the groove back, trying to work again with my mechanic. So it's it all it's always different weekend after weekend. It's the same. But that tunnel vision is so normal, I think, for every sport. Yeah. Like even though we still have fun, it's not the same. Mm. It's not the same thing. I feel like I had the same thing. A li- I mean, lens are is a bit different, but the first two days after practice, I was like, f- I'm over it. I'm done. Like, this week sucks. I hate it. And then on race day, I like, woke up and was like, forget everything and ride. And by the end of the weekend, I was like, that was the best weekend I've had all year. And it was like, the first <laughs> two days were just trash. And I was like, you know, it's like that. It, it all pays off, you know? And it's like a different type of happiness. It's like, you could ride with, riding with your friends is really fun. But after two weeks, you're like, I want to go really fast and yeah. I want to be better than everybody. Yeah. I don't know. It's like there's that little thing inside you. You're crazy, man. <laughs> no, I think it's everyone's got a little competitive side. Yeah, you got it. if you're racing, you if you're here, you, you got to do it. You're like the most. Comp- you can't say that. You're so fucking competitive. <laughs> Whatever, guy. <laughs> But uh, some stuff I don't like competition too, though. Like women, I don't like <laughs> to be in competition because we are in competition for women too. Like there's one little bird, wee, and there's ten dogs, <laughs> and it's a fucking competition also. But oh, sick. All right, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Then. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I respect Bro, it. I respect uh, it. No, but it's true. Like, yeah, you are one. Like you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, there's one cute girl, and in downhill, that's the the story. <laughs> If you go to whatever, there's one cute girl. Yeah, and there's hundreds, not hundreds, but a lot of people DM like Isabella. The junior, you know. Oh, so you're talking about <laughs> my girlfriend's name, Isabel, and I was like, "What?" Oh no, no, no sorry, <laughs> sorry. I wouldn't dare. Yeah. But Isabella is single, whatever, and you can see everybody just come to the pit and look around. Hey, <laughs> you know, it's like everybody's competition on the track and on the side of the track for her. Man, I'm a racer. I got no time for this shit at races, yeah. dude. Not at races. I'm, I'm here for one thing. Is it well? Is it well? Should you wait? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm strictly for business purposes. <laughs> okay, but. Yeah. We can put that in a riders association. <laughs> Respect the, <laughs> the competition. All right, mic drop. Thank you, boys. Thank you, boys. <laughs>